got her halty on right now because she's a husky and she likes to pull so this is their only way to contain her so um, she's now a year old um, typically you can spay your dog at six months so we did book her in for a spay at six months we dropped her off at the vet two hours later I got a phone call saying they weren't able to spare because they found out that she had pancreatitis unfortunately which is something that she'll have for the rest of her life but we have got her on a dog food that kind of keeps it under control and she just gets very specific dog treats and nothing else um, so when we dropped her off at the vet eight days ago, we were a little bit worried about whether she was going to be able to get spayed or not, just to see if maybe her pancreas was inflamed or something, because when you open up the belly, it kind of, you're, you're touching everything and you could cause an issue. Last year when we tried to get her spayed, we then had to go through a full heat and that meant that we that she was walking around with a diaper and, and we had some interesting things there. I remember taking her out to go pee and um, one of the times walking out, letting her go outside and then all of a sudden realizing she still had the diaper on. So I, so I ran after her, but it was too late so she already started peeing. We weren't sure what we were getting into with a spay, just with a husky. Huskies are known to be pretty energetic and she likes to run around and stuff. So. The idea of having to contain that for about eight days was uh, we knew that was going to be a challenge. And it was it was tough but thankfully we got an uneventful spay um, in the sense that nothing went overly wrong with her and it was overly easy besides trying to contain her and just keep her overly calm. So we'll show you how the eight days went. <laughs> Today is Kino's day one of recovery. We got abruptly woken up at 5 a.m. Kino was thrashing her cone around in the crate, and so that woke Chris and I up. Um, so it's been a bit of an early morning for us. Really happy that uh, Keen's over here is totally okay just to keep on napping. She uh, She's definitely pretty uncomfortable. Um, she's, she's having a hard time trying to figure out where to lie. She's not quite sure what the right position is for her yet. Hopefully that will just come and obviously as her belly kind of gets less and less tender like she can go back to just kind of lying regularly. She wants to keep jumping on the furniture and that's tough because we've always allowed her on the furniture and she's not allowed to jump right now. When she eats breakfast we can give her her medication. Um, it's her pain med so hopefully that should help her feel better. Um, sometimes the vet said that they feel so good that they forget that they've had surgery and they start jumping around and they think it's fun to like go try and play again and we're on limited movement for the next 10 days so that should definitely be tough with Kino because Miss Keen's over here is definitely our active little girl. How do you feel? Oh thank you. So I'm gonna get up and give her some breakfast um, and her pain meds and hopefully um, that the pain meds can start kicking in. Kino, what's the food? So these chicken treats are Kino's favorite. Um, she's got a bit of pancreatitis, um, very mild we think. She can't have a lot of fatty treats like regular dog treats that you would get from the grocery store or like the pet store and stuff. So um, we just give her, it's just freeze dried chicken breast. Honestly it's the same price as the stuff you can get at the pet store like the, the other treats that you, most people give their dogs so it works out for us that she's getting something a little bit better and it's healthy for her and she loves it. So um, the biggest challenge yesterday was the fact that 
Kino thinks she's okay, she's had her pain medication, and she thinks that she's invincible, she can jump on all the furniture, she can jump on the bed. How do you feel? Tell them how you feel, Kinge. I feel great. I feel so good. Do you feel so good? So, Kino's definitely been a little bit more active than she should be. Um, so, I was checking her incision this morning and it's definitely gotten a lot bloodier, but the blood's kind of all underneath the skin. Well, I'll give you an idea of like what I'm talking about here. So, if you see her little belly here, thank you for showing us, Kino. Oh, she's like, oh, show and tell time. So, this is her incision here. It's only here to here but we're definitely getting some blood here and some blood over here. So I called the vet just because I was a little concerned. Um, she said that typically in like larger dogs, you get a lot of bleeders sometimes. Uh, sometimes when you're already an active dog like Kino, she made it down the stairs yesterday once. Um, she hopped on the bed. She's been trying to get up and down on the furniture. She wanted to just stretch the bleeders to make them look bloody again. Um, so nothing to be overly concerned about. Um, one thing that I like to do is when I'm not sure or when I'm trying to watch the healing process is I take pictures um, of everything obviously but I took a picture of her incision yesterday and I took a picture of her incision today and I actually sent those off to the vet so that's going to be super helpful because the vet's going to give me a call back and let me know whether I need to bring her in or whether she's okay just to just keep hanging out and keep healing and she seems to be pretty pretty happy right now she's just KO'd. So I can finally leave the house now. That was quite a long week for me. Uh, I was inside pretty much with Kino for the entire eight days. Unvoluntary house arrest? Pretty much. Um, it wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be, luckily. Um, she was pretty good, but um, we definitely had some issues. Um, as you saw a little bit earlier on in the video, um, she was kind of stretching and making her fatty tissue bleed. Um, we still got a little bit of bruising left, but um, everything's healing really nicely, so we're really happy about that. Um, we're finally able to take her out on walks. We still can't take her hiking yet. Um, we're kind of, you have to still ease a dog back in. Um, you can still see her incision wounds. So we just want to make sure that that doesn't get dirty. It completely heals up. Uh, overall, it wasn't too hard of a week. Uh, just a lot of like lifting the dog. I got my workout every day without having to go to the gym because um, we had to carry her up and down the stairs every day outside. Anything that was like more than like that much, she had to like lift her up because that's, that's where she was like continuously ar already ripping the fatty tissue. She had the opportunity to rip her stitches. Many dogs rip their stitches. We're very thankful that she didn't. So we had a relatively uneventful week in that aspect, which was great. So overall for us, like we thought the spay was pretty easy for our dog anyways. And I think the key to making it go well for is just basically making sure that you stay on top of your dog. Don't let them go go crazy running around. Like sure, sure, you know, like jumped on the bed sometimes and it's hard to, especially with the dog with her energy, it's hard to hard to stay on top of her all week. But but the vet even said like you can only do so much. So it's really just trying to be as proactive as possible. Obviously they're gonna do their own thing. They're gonna fly past you. You're not gonna be able to catch them every single time, but as long as you try to be as good about it as yeah. you can, I think, you know, you'll have a relatively easy recovery period and we sure did. So this weekend we're heading up to a cottage up uh, in the Bruce Peninsula area. We're gonna be shooting some photos and video of a new Airbnb that's getting listed. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So we'll be the first one staying there. And then we're gonna head up to Tobemori at some point and check out that area. So this will be our fifth trip up to the Bruce Peninsula. We try to get up once a year. It's definitely a really cool area up there, especially in um, Bruce Peninsula National Park. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Bruce yep. Peninsula. They've got the grotto. They've got just so many cool different things. There's also Fathom 5 uh, National Marine Park. We won't be getting out there this weekend because the water is still frozen in certain areas. But it should be a pretty cool trip and we can't wait to share it with you. So if you like this video and you want to see more of Kino and some of our adventures come up, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and we will see you in Tobermory.